Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. It is Friday, uh, January 6th, I believe. Let me just double check on my computer. Yes, it is January 6th, and uh, one week from today, it is Friday the 13th. Just letting you guys know um, that I will be here Friday the 13th. Uh, I've met a couple of people who are like very superstitious about it, but I will still be here. Um, but we have a lot to talk about today. Um, I got some city council. They'll be talking about the Fort Missoula Regional Park update. They're talking about uh, the city, the new city. Uh, Police, this new city police is getting a new evidence facility to store a lot of their evidence for um, trials and this or that. Um, we also have uh, the crime victim advocates um, with, uh, I think that's under public safety and health where they're talking about some of the trends and um, themes that were happening in 2006 and how they hope to improve um, the reduction of uh, violent crimes against people and helping people who have been um, subject to violent crimes. We also have some MCAT announcements. We're going to be doing a bunch of live streaming next week. But first, let's talk about what we're going to be uh, doing in terms of the weather. It's looking <laughs> pretty cold out there. Um, it is currently zero degrees outside. It didn't feel that bad. It was okay. But of course, your high is going to be 8 degrees. Your low is going to be negative 16 degrees. But then by Saturday, it's going to be mostly sunny with a high of 16 degrees and a low of 8 degrees. And we have that 50% chance of snow continuing on through the weekend which is good for some of you people who like to go out and do some winter recreation. But who knows, um, sometimes it's better to have snow the day before with this fresh powder and then you're able to go out on the on the slopes and whatnot. But of course, um, speaking of slopes, let's talk about what kind of fresh snow has uh, fallen on some of your favorite ski resorts here in Montana. Uh, Whitefish uh, Mountain hasn't had no snow, but of course it says it's green to go. There's 25 inches, 25 to on the base and then of course uh, 67 on the mountain. Um, there's uh, Blacktail Mountain Ski Area. They had one inch of fresh powder in the last 24 hours. Big Sky Resort has had no fresh powder but it says it's green to go. Snow Bowl is, nope, it doesn't look like any of these places have any fresh snow but of course uh, Montana Snow Bowl is green to go. Trenton Pass Ski Resort, Great Divide, Lost Trail, Powder Mountain, Maverick Mountain, Discovery Ski Area has had two inches in the last 72 hours. Bridger Bowl, um, Red Lodge Mountain, nothing. And of course, Showdown Montana had one inch of snow in the last 72 hours. And it, it everything seems like it's green to go. So if you guys are planning on going up any mountains this weekend, uh, go right ahead. It looks like everything's green to go. And I got this from onthesnow.com. And that's a great resource for anybody to find out uh, whether or not um, your snow or your snow passes are pretty much green to go. I probably could um, look at Idaho because Red Lodge is like clear on the other side of Montana and Idaho is like right next door to us. But um, maybe next time. <laughs> but uh, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you go log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube. You can like us on Facebook, and you can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Um, you can also like MCAT on Facebook. You can log on to MCAT.org. You can find all these wonderful things on MCAT. Um, there's, um, uh, let's see, you there's we have our, th our own Facebook page, Twitter page, and of course, YouTube channel, which is um, MCAT TV. So, and also you can uh, follow us on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. And this is a great resource for anybody um, who wants to watch anything that was made in Missoula. Um, MCAT also produces a lot of things here in Missoula as well. Um, but before I get into more MCAT-related stuff, huh, that's weird, um, let's talk about some news stuff. Let's see what's happening in the news. Um, a Missoula County Courthouse has gotten a new addition today, or should I say an old addition. Um, after four years, the Paxton murals have been put back in the Missoula County Courthouse. For those of you who, who don't know who um, Paxton, th the Paxton murals are, it was uh, painted by um, Edgar, Edgar S. Paxton, um, who was one of the, pretty much the very last frontiersmen in all around, because, uh, um, he, of course, I have an image for you guys, and here is Edgar S. Paxton. He is most credible with um, creating um, the uh, the famous painting of Custer's Last Stand, and here is basically here is just a little chunk of it because it's a huge, it's a huge mural, it's a huge painting. Basically, takes up a whole entire wall of any old um, studio building, anything like that. Um, and this is, of course, Custer himself in the Battle of Little Bighorn. So. Uh, those murals will be uh, 
Um, th so they removed the murals when they're doing some reconstruction. And of course, when they removed the murals, they were they were glued on. Um, so they were used like kind of like that uh, uh, construction glue to kind of keep you know walls together and stuff like that. So they put that glue on the murals and put them against the wall. And they you know they just figures like oh we're never going to take these down and whatnot. And of course um, in 2012 they decided to take them down and they're just like uh oh what are we going to do? So uh, uh, what uh, the city and the ca and the area uh, what people did is that they hired some people out of town who are experts on removing art from certain areas and restoring um, even though that maybe um, the painting themselves aren't damaged but like the core and the um, I guess the frame and whatnot like that it has a potential of of being um, damaged or having some issues as well when they're removing the paint so they expertly removed them uh, cleaned it up um, basically uh, put a coating on it to kind of protect it. And I think they put them in like hanging um, containers and whatnot. And you guys can see that at the uh, Missoula County Courthouse back where they were before. And I think they put them in a couple new places, but there's a lot of murals because um, Edgar S. Paxson uh, was uh, tasked with uh, making these murals uh, back in 1912 in which he completed them in 1914. And there's like so many murals. And uh, you can learn more about this by uh, going on to uh, MCAT.org and looking up the show Look Before You Speak. Um, Ted Hughes um, was a guest on Steve Gluckert's show Look Before You Speak and he talks about Edgar S. Paxson where I got this information from but the fact that I know that um, they're on the uh, in the Missoula County Courthouse was from the Missoulian.com. In the state um, Steve Danes uh, met with Ryan Zinke to talk about uh, his wishes and expectations um, if and when um, Zinke takes office of the interior with Donald Trump's new cabinet, which will be sworn in January 20th, I believe. Uh, many of these uh, things that were, you know, protecting Montana lands, finding um, new energy resources for the state of Montana, were a few of the both of them already pretty much agreed on from the start. Um, Dane would want Zinke to look back into roads and repairs of some of the back roads here in Montana and maybe even somewhere else because, you know, you know it's in the interior. And uh, no one knows uh, the back roads of any old uh, state than um, people from Montana. <laughs> um, the center also asked Zinke uh, to use the cabinet to uh, post a, s a strength in fed the federal lands and water conservation fund, which uses offshore oil and gas royalties to support the conservation of land and water. Um, LWCF raises about $900 million a year, but Congress repeatedly votes to spend the money on other things. Uh, one of the major things um, I saw from the Billings uh, Gazette article was the repeal of uh, Sally Jewell's federal coal. She was the former um, interior, well, well she's, go she's, go she's the future former interior um, secretary, um, but of course uh, she, um, she uh, repealed, I mean, she put a, a pretty much a stop on leasing of of coal, of federal coal, on the basis that there was uh, not fair uh, uh, evidence to, to determine the environmental impacts to coal mining that would be worth the cost. So in a lot of ways, you know, with coal mining, it's always like you never know what what may or may not happen, and there's no, uh, you know, an EPA study may not be good enough because after the fact, when a mining happens, you don't know what the environmental impact is until after people do mining. It's like, oh, oh, well, that happened. Because you know they might hit uh, like a underwater spring, and they might have another uh, super fun side on hand as well. Um, up next, we have a new national thing, and of course, a uh, majority of Americans say they don't want to repeal the Affordable Care Act, aka Obamacare. The recent poll from the Kaiser Family Foundation finds that 75% of Americans say they either want lawmakers to leave Obamacare alone or repeal it only when they can replace it with a new health care law. 20% uh, of those polls say that they just want to kill the uh, thing immediately. And a lot of uh, basis of, of Republicans in the House and the Senate uh, have said that they just want to completely get rid of Obamacare. But um, as they get closer and closer to the uh, act of repealing it, a lot of people are um, skeptical, saying that, you know, if you're going to uh, get rid of it, you should find something to replace it because we need uh, health care, better uh, health care in general. Um, so. The idea of Obamacare is many speculate the problem with Obamacare is, is it's good when you're young, um, like me, um, but when you get older, Obamacare becomes more expensive. And the whole idea is logically it makes sense that the older tax bracket makes more money than the younger on average. So the idea of Obamacare is having like the old pay for the young, uh, while the young are cheaper since uh, their medical costs tend to be lower on average. 
Um, whether you agree or not with Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act was a sta step in the right direction, but it shouldn't be the magical wand that fixes uh, uni the United States health care. Um, but then, of course, there's a lot of moving parts, and I got this information from NPR.org. And um, this uh, Saturday, just letting you guys know, is that we have our Saturday drop-in animation, just kind of changing the subject right away. Uh, there's no transition at all, except for that dissolve that transition into this page. So at MCAT.org, um, you can see our page where Saturday drop in animation. There's Finn and Sophia. Um, they're one of our past kids that have done our summer s um, uh, stop animation camp weeks, which will be advertising pretty pretty soon all over MCAT and all over um, newspapers and all sorts of programs for kids to enjoy during the summer. But of course, uh, if you don't want to wait until the summer, every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. starting this Saturday, it's the first one of the 2017, and it'll pretty much go on until the end of May. Um, you guys can check it out, uh, 1 to 5 p.m. for kids aged 9 to 13, and it's only $10. And you can always um, do a half day for about $5. Um, yeah, that pretty much does it for um, basic announcements of what's going on with MCAT. Um, we are doing a live stream next week uh, with the Vienna International Ballet Experience and Danceter. Um, we were working with a couple people with uh, the Rocky Mountain School of Ballet. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I butchered that. And, and Danceter, which is a new nonprofit here in Missoula, which is uh, supposed to um, express art through dance and uh, find a way to communicate with one another through dance, whether or not you, m you may or may not speak English, um, or I mean, uh, you may not speak the local language, but dance is a universal language that people can get behind, and that's what dance is basically about. Um, we're and we're going to be live streaming it pretty much uh, nine to five Tuesday through Friday, and it's going to be from the Denison Theater, and of course the um, the gala. We're going to be trying to live stream that on um, Saturday at six p.m. at the Wilma Theater, so you guys can check that out. And we'll also be doing another live stream uh, uh, Friday, Saturday next week, which is supposed to be the. Uh, the largest statewide um, wrestling tournament, and it's going to be at Sentinel High School, but we'll be live streaming it on our um, high school sports website, um, which is pretty simple. You just click on our high school sports right here, and you can find all that and um, more by clicking on that nice little link. Just once again, it's high school sports. This is where, and we live stream pretty much every high school sport we uh, we we do, and we did all the uh, football just last semester, and we had and the whole fun thing about doing high school sports is we get a lot of high school students to get on board to help out with that as well. Um, MCAT uh, does a lot of uh, shoots for a lot of people here in the community, and I have a nice little. Uh, array of videos for you guys kind of showing you what kind of stuff we've done um, for uh, the Missoula community and if you're interested in having MCAT come down and shoot your uh, event rally cause lecture or um, conference um, MCAT will be totally down to do it and if you want to live stream it that's uh, fifty dollars per live stream and um, let's see so the the idea the um, I'm I'm blanking on my mind. I'm, I've been talking too much, and now my I'm thinking w before I speak, which can be bad. But uh <laughs> I man, I'm just um, I'm just blanking out right now. So the idea is that if you are interested, you can um, log on to MCAT.org, and you can click on the tabs where uh, you can um, where where the forms are, and it's media assistance grants. You can fill it out, and MCAT will come down and film your um, organization's event, rally, cause, or um <laughs> panel or anything like that. So the, uh, the idea is that you must be a nonprofit. Um, and to get in contact with us, to find out more, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us mcat at mcat.org. And without further ado, here are some of the stuff that we've done for a lot of different organizations and the University of Montana, which is an organization. Um, and when we come back, I'll talk about some of the movies that will be premiering today. This peep show is... Um is Evelyn Cameron, who was a British woman who moved to Montana, eastern Montana, uh, in the, uh, at the end of the 19th century, um, and uh, homesteaded it with her husband. And she became a really important figure, not at the time she was living so much, but in retrospect, because she took a glass plate photographs of the life that surrounded her at that time, um, including people in the agrarian circumstances. I am on the battlefield for my Lord, for my Lord. 
I am on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promise him that I, I will serve until I die. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. When I, when I took a picture of grandmother Kelly, the real boy, he died in her arms. I took a lot of pictures. Then look my camera, the view final on the pagoda. I saw the girl with her arm running, screaming. I said, by myself, I don't know why she make me running. Then I run very close. I take a lot of picture of her. You see her left arm? All skin coming off, all of her back. I know she died right away. And I have my canteen water, army can water. I put her water body. She screamed and said, oh, put water, I did die right away. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that. It was a horrible time. I was on the board for the old people's voice representing the labor movement at the time. The result of that was is that we eventually after after about 30 yeah. years uh, yes about yeah. 30 years yeah. of existence and we went uh, and of course that led to a lot of other things that uh, the people that Harry Goings was involved with we you played a role in that we got him involved it was our the organization that we had put together to oppose the sales tax Tanzania itself referred to its own urbanization rate as lacking which may seem like a silly comment to make but it implies urban good rural bad Western lifestyle good, rural African lifestyle bad. That's their own comment about their own people. India refers to um, native, the indigenous peoples of India, and its lower castes as backward. In a document from 2014. These are both from 2014. So this isn't even white people saying you're backward, or white people saying you need more urbanization because rural life is silly. This is them adopting that ethic from people who told them that it's true and then applying it to the people below them. In light of all of his work and his experiences in the armed services, he had, uh, Frank had a strong belief that water was, most, was one of the most important things for communities to have conversations about. So even though he himself didn't practice water law, directly, he felt that it was significant enough to single out for our community to have a conversation. It, uh, in terms of the, the base, who's on uh, what side, uh, you, you really have uh, the French, uh, the, uh, uh, the British, uh, the Americans, and then a host of other countries on the Entente side, uh, and the Italians, you can't leave out the Italians, and on the central powers, you have basically Austria-Hungary, you have Germany, you have part of the Ottoman uh, Empire. The war will expand from that shot at Sarajevo uh, into a worldwide war. Uh, there are I could have sworn he said Italians. But anyways, uh, let's talk about some of the movies that will be playing in your theaters. Uh, <laughs> Underworld, <laughs> which one is it again? Underworld something something, uh, another one. Uh, another one. Uh <laughs> It's called Underworld Blood Wars. Um, as if beating a dead horse uh, wasn't enough, the story bleeds the horse dry in this vampire versus werewolf movie again, which starts uh, Kate B uh, Beckinsale again, uh, trying to hide uh, her um, ancient once again or not. Or uh, I get some of those movies confused, which she should or should not have been. Have, I don't know. Should she have a British accent or shouldn't she? You never know. I don't know. Is she British? Is she Scandinavian? Um, it, I don't know. It's, it really depends. Anyways, the war that uh, has been waged for thrive five movies will continue in this movie. Or is it four movies? I don't know. Moving on. Next up, we got... Uh, uh, but, of course, these are th that was like the only movie that's coming out. But this movie is another movie. Uh, wonder whatever happened to Jackie Chan. Well, he's in this movie. Um, it's called Railroad Tiger. Um, it, it's a movie about a train and a group of other folks who have been pushed by the military too far and see how, see how a ragtag group of misfits steal train stuff from the military. And I was wondering what happened to Jackie Chan, and now I'm not. Next up is the uh, Ardennes, Ar Ar Sardines, Ar Arden, Ar the Arden. Okay, anyways, watch as a guy who goes to prison because his brothers left him behind as they made their getaway. Um, and I assume he gets revenge when he gets out. 
Um, like most movies that follow the betrayal of someone close to you, like uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, The Shawshank Redemption, the point of this movie is clear. Uh, revenge drama, cars in the middle of the forest. Cars, that's a car right there in the middle of a forest. And there's the title with like a rising moon or whatnot. Um, but yeah, and uh, cars in the middle of the forest and a family scarred for life because of failed burglary or something that went wrong a couple years ago. Up next, it's called I, Daniel Blank. Um, it's, uh, if you are uh, uh, frustrated with uh, welfare or the Affordable Care Act, this is kind of like that movie for you. Um, following the forgettable movies come I, Daniel Blank, which follows a guy named Daniel Blank, I, um, who is some guy trying to live on welfare. Uh, Republicans say that no, and Democrats will be like, oh, we need to help this man by making more regulations on other things that have nothing to do with helping this person directly. Um, you see, this movie is made to be political or used politically. I'm not sure exactly. All and it's I it's in uh, London, England. So it's uh, uh, also some of their uh, some woman who depends on it to feed her kids. Um, and this guy becomes like a surrogate father to them. So she's like a single mom with like three kids. And he's like, oh, don't worry, I'll help you or something like that. I watched the trailer. And I'm just like, huh. Okay, cool. I'm not saying I'm against this movie. I'm just saying it's like it's it's been made <laughs> plenty of times, many times before about like uh, a woman uh, with family struggling and an older guy who's pretty much just like frustrated with life and who opens his heart to a struggling um, family and whatnot. Anyways, um, next up, we got a nice little art clip, and this art clip will pretty much end next week. This is their last... This is your last weekend to check it out, and it's at the Zootown Arts Community Center. It is, um, and up next, right after this clip, I'm going to be talking about all your First Friday events happening right after this. Every first Friday, there is an art gathering here in downtown Missoula, and I'm going to give you the guide on what kind of art's happening, and I got a lot of this information from MissoulaEvents.net. So let's start off with the very first one, the democratic spirit. Today is the first day to view the exposi uh, this expedition, the uh, exhibit, exhibition, um, pfft, whatever, <laughs> the, the democratic spirit, uh, Peter Norton Family Gifts, uh, at M Missoula Art Museum, and on it's going to be on view until May 27th, so you have plenty of time to check it out. But um, gallery hours are 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and of course they'll be open for uh, First Friday tonight um, from 5 to 8 p.m. with music from KBGA and whatnot. Um, the next one we got is Brookshire Hathaway Montana Properties. This is where it's at, and this the show is called Ad. Repeat, print, as you can see. Uh, join them for the gallery night of the New Year's when they welcome Katie S. Uh, Manchain. Um, Katie is a Missoula-based artist who uh, uses traditional methods of relief printmaking. Her single and multi-layer wood prints are inspired by the rich Montana landscape. And you can check that out at 
Brookshire Hathaway Montana Properties, and I believe that is uh, right next, uh, right across from um, Five on Black. So you know, you you're like right by Jimmy John's. You go across the street, and it's like, oh, I didn't know this was art gallery or whatever. I think that's the place, but don't bear with me. And again, uh, Brookshire Hathaway Montana Properties is where this venue is. Up next, we got uh, Memories Break Us, Memories Make Us, which is a uh, E3. Uh, um, it's going to be at the E3 Convergence Gallery, which is on Main Street. Uh, it is it is basically across the street from the sh uh, the Shack Cafe. Um, the E3 is thrilled to uh, feature artists uh, Eliza Hartis and uh, Adelaide uh, Gale. Um, every acknowledgement memory of their past while not letting childhood sexual abuse define them. Through this body, adding perspective on themes of the human condition between the found art light boxes of everything and uh, figurative ceramic sculptures of Hartis. Uh, uh, and this is certain to be the cerebrally intense and m uh, memorable exhibit. So you guys can check that out at E3 Convergence Gallery happening tonight. Up next, we got Make 40, which is at Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing. Um, yeah, it's photographs, um, photo montage, drawings, and new uh, media meditations. Um, that's, <laughs> that's what it says. <laughs> and it will be open um, first Friday. And it'll be um, from 5 to 9 p.m., so this can actually be your last stop if you guys, and it's going to be uh, uh, framing at 709 Ronan Street, Missoula, and you can call 541-7100 for more information. Um, up next, we got uh, Batik on Silk, and Tony Spencer from Post Falls, Idaho, will be displaying her original silk batiks with the theme of Northwest Blend, um, a collection inspired by the image that catch her eye, birds, landscape music, and the unique shadows formed by bicycles. Um, the next, and that's going to be at the artist shop um, tonight. Up next, we got the uh, the Missoula Art Museum is doing their 45th benefit art show. They said they had their Ruby Jubilation a couple years ago, and this is the 45th benefit art auction ex exhibition. So th all the best art that's been basically pouring out of the Missoula Art Museum will be up for auction. Um, of course, there's a private, there's always a couple of uh, private galleries that are not up for sale, but these ones are going to be up for auction for their 45th benefit auction ex exhibition on Friday, today, from 5 to 8 p.m., and you can check that out. It's the work of 82 Montana-based and nationally known artists for the 45th annual art auction. And, of course, the auction is not happening then, they're just kind of have in the exhibition before the art is gone, whether or not they uh, are able to sell a good chunk of it. And hopefully a lot of money that um, um, th uh, this benefit, this benefit art auction is the largest fundraiser of the year. And it provides critical for support for MAM's contemporary art exhibition, education programs, and the longstanding commitment to free admission, free expression. And of course, the Missouri Museum is always free to the public and it's always open from nine to five pretty much um the next up uh, actually this is the last one we got iconic women this is going to be uh, iconic women's uh, portrait series by christina uh, sire uh, the purpose of this illustrative portrait series is to celebrate uh, iconic women and their diversity uh an, an iconic woman is a woman who claims her right to living the kind of life she dreams of herself and this is um going to be happening at uh, Black Owl Tattoo, which is uh, by that uh, new Montana winery place, and also uh, right next to uh, the Green Light uh, 401 store, 406 store. So you guys can check that out, and all of these um, by, uh, by logging on to MissoulaEvents.net to find out all your art and First Friday needs happening this um, today. It's happening all day today, so it starts. everything starts at 5. You can all go check it out. There's a lot of great arts, and what, why not um, do it? Because it's a great uh, way to culture yourself, and that would be a good New Year's resolution for some, for some of you who haven't been able to get out and about, and it's a good way to uh, culture yourself. <laughs> but without further ado, let's talk a little bit about some city council stuff. So I have a nice uh, clip to kind of kick us off, but uh, let me just give you an... Uh, uh, a cold open, basically. So up for discussion. Oh wait, no, no, that's not it. <laughs> uh, as you may know, that the city and county passed a bond a couple years ago to create a Fort Missoula Regional Park, in addition to update playground equipment in 11 existing parks in Missoula. With the western phase uh, one part 
park of Fort Missoula Regional Park pretty much completed. Phase two is going on depending on the weather. And here is um, a nice little uh, clip of it featuring, um, uh, I can't remember his name, but it's Neil Miner. And he is the project manager of Fort Missoula Regional Park. And he's uh, this is when I went over, when I went on down to the Fort Missoula Regional Park when they had a statue unveiling. And he gave us a nice little tour of their turf field, which will be having all sorts of rugby and soccer and such great uh, lacrosse fun. So here, without further ado, here's a little taste of that. It's a specific um, turf blend for um, active, like for sports. sports. Okay. So it's not just As you can see, that is a little grass, taste of Fort Missoula Reg Regional Park. There's turf. Neil Miner. Um, um, I'm assuming you should be able to hear him. Oh, I didn't know we had a turf farm in Wyoming. Yeah, they actually, yeah, the, the drainage on it. Um, It actually has a sand in the field, so the, it's not like a clay-based drainage, so that it aids with our drainage through the um, through the sod. You guys could walk on it if you want. You don't have to stay on it. And the turf is recycled plastic? So it has recycled content in it from uh, Yellowstone National Park. Um, in the fibers, it has infrared reflectors that make the turf 10 to 15 degrees uh, cooler than other artificial turf um, and yeah we have lines on the field now permanent lines for full-size soccer uh, two adult uh, rec soccer leagues and then the lacrosse and then we we have uh, sleeves in the field for rugby goalposts so we would paint the lines for rugby um, when they if they if and when they wanted to use it All right, um, and that was a nice little kickoff to our city council meeting um, of the parks and recreation. So kicking off is, again, uh, Neil Miner at, uh, uh, at the meeting, and he's talking a little bit more about uh, Fort Missoula Regional Park in um, a more of a uh, just kind of like, and, and it, he, he talks about it, and of course, phase one and phase two. Um, here's a little look on what it is. Phase one is this general area right here. Phase two is going to be this little softball um, Diamond starfish. It kind of looks like a starfish. So I'm going to say uh, the softball um, diamonds made into a starfish. And this is going to be phase two, phase one, and this is him just kind of talking about it. When you go out there, it's really hard to tell somebody you're meeting at Fort Missoula Regional Park, and you could be on the other side of the same phase, and you couldn't find each other. So um, just kind of telling people where they are and we're going to have these, uh, not this specific map, we're still working on a rendering, but a similar map that shows kind of where the parking is, um, where the amenities are with all the names. Um, we've kind of named, you know, like the, the pavilion is Bella Vista uh, Pavilion. Um, the, the Fort Bowl and Green Guidon Bowl um, Green Guidon is the, the public right-of-way on the south side, and then 36 is this one. Uh, I told one of the guys from the Missoulian one day that we named named it Green Guidon. He asked where it came from, and I told him it was the old um, newsletter for the CCC at Fort Missoula. So he thought it was really – he kind of nerded out on the fact that we named a road after a newspaper. So All right, so um, there are many um, – um, things that are going to be built at the Fort Missoula Regional Park that still need naming, and they do talk a little bit more about uh, how you uh, can put your input on naming um, certain things like benches, trees, and more, whether it be a memorial or uh, someone who was born and you say, this is your tree. Congratulations. <laughs> but uh, up next, we got uh, a quote from Donna Gockler, who is the uh, Parks and Rec Director. Uh, the Fort's grand opening will also be on April 29th, of this year that's the whole idea they hope to get done with a big chunk of it by this time so they can have a big grand opening for the public um donna glockler talks about the history of the fort and the tours that we'll be giving on that day a lot of what you'll see um, on saturday the 29th we'll also be installing the various interpretive panels the ccc trail is within the open space area and it'll kind of walk you through some of the history of the Civilian Conservation Corps at Fort Missoula and the importance of the Civilian Conservation Corps to our uh, state, federal, and all public lands. And uh, 
western Montana in particular, and the fact that uh, you know Glacier National Park was probably built from Missoula. Uh, the fort was one of the largest deployment centers in the nation. So a lot of activities going on, a close uh, partnership with the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula as well as the uh, Rocky Mountain Military Museum of History. All right, so there's going to be a lot of history, and it'll be a, a, not only a, a park, but also a destination of Missoula and Missoula history. Um, the next uh, quote I got is um, from more about Donna, and she talks about some of the sponsorship uh, and keeping the park public and basically less of a corporate thing. So she's finding out ways to uh, raise money to help offset a lot of the maintenance costs that will be um, implemented with the Fort Missoula Regional Park. I have been calling for almost a year now about how do we get a sponsorship there because what a great opportunity for them. And we've had many, many of those kinds of calls for both permanent sponsorships, which is the point of the LEAFA legacy. So we have a space. We have the ability to install um, bronze plaques on you know, stones that fit in the landscape, recognizing sponsors. But the whole idea is that it really retain that historic district, that CCC feel and that the sponsorships uh, go up on banners along fence lines during events only. Uh, we see the use of feather banners, reader boards, and then it all goes away, you know, Sunday night when the event's over. All right, so if you guys, if any of you out there are interested in sponsoring the Fort Missoula Regional Park, um, Donna Glocker is looking for sponsors um, today. So anytime, so you can call them at uh, 721 Park. So, um, the next, uh, let's see, the last quote I have is more from um, Donna Glockler, of course, with $38 million of the bond money going to a Fort Missoula Regional Park, um, $1 million that went up to updating uh, 11 pra playgrounds of existing parks, um, $3 million are being diverted to uh, grants. So um, these are grants used for uh, anything that are related to park improvements and park trails and all that stuff. So Donna talks a little bit more about um, what they're doing with that $3 million extra dollars from the M for Missoula Regional Park Bond. I better, st <laughs> better show this video before I burp to death. It sort of echoes their existing county parks grant program that they had and a little bit like the Recreation Trails program for the state. And they've had a call for uh, applications. Uh, for example, I know that the Grand Creek Trail Association has made an application. I'm sure several other, other communities and so the county's primary goal is to use that $3 million as granting opportunity to leverage additional funds partnerships and that through those partnerships, uh, for the most part, other, other entities, uh, whether it be state parks, uh, forest service, or friends of groups, and the communities would be maintaining those trails for the most part. They're also working... All right, so that was... Uh uh, Donna Glocker kind of explained a little bit more about this grant. Um, Bonner uh, Community Council was also talking about this $3 million grant because somebody from Missoula Parks North came down and talked a little bit more about uh, this grant. And uh, Bonner does hope to uh, dip into this grant so they can um, increase the Tiger Grant Trail that will be going through Missoula. Um, and also there's uh, always the Kim Williams Trail that there, uh, that goes almost t all the way to East Missoula and beyond. And uh, Bonner wants to really just like improve connectivity and just like have a nice paved path basically. It's going to be paved all the way from like Hamilton and beyond because there's apparently another place that's just as beyond all the way to Bonner and maybe even beyond Bonner as well. So uh, it's going to be quite a trail that's going to be made and hopefully this $3 million will help make that a uh, possibility. Uh, once again, Fort Missoula plans to have a grand opening on uh, April 29th and hopes to finish phase two uh, this year as well, uh, weather permitted, because they've been doing it pretty much through the winter and doing all this stuff. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll find out more information as it becomes available. Uh, Public Safety and Health, uh, the meeting gave us an update on three of the crime victim advocates for people who have been victims of crimes. There's a uh, crime victim advocates program, just response and healthy relationships program. Uh, Chantel uh, Gaynor, she talks about uh, crime victim advocates and just response uh, to represent both organizations. And she talks about uh, some of the services and the things that they've provided back in 2016 and gives a kind of like a fiscal year um, update. Advocate program in FY16, we saw 1,786 clients. There were 544 orders of protection served by the um, 
by the sheriff's office. We help with the majority of that, but not necessarily all of that. So um, folks can obtain orders of protection without us, but we are the only place in the city or county where the paperwork is available. Uh, some folks can download it, but um, most people opt to, to stop by our office to at least ask initial questions of do they qualify. All right, so that was on Chantal Gaynor, and she talks a little bit more about uh, – the crime victim advocates is a nice it, – it it's good for people who have been, had incidents that are results of violence, uh, which are transferred over to them right away um, from the police. And then, of course, they screen people and they interview people and how they could help uh, victims of crimes. Um, um, and if they can't help you directly, they send you to other organizations that are more fitted to help you in that um, aspect of it. And of course, some people who have been victims of domestic violence um, can always call the YWCA um, emergency response. Um, yeah, so um, moving on, the C uh, CVA, Crime Victim Advocate, talks about funding sources of the organization. And here's uh, Chantelle Gaynor once again. So we are currently funded about 61% uh, with grants, about 23% by the county, um, and this include, includes court surcharges, and about 17% by the city. Uh, our largest federal grant that covers our city work, Encourage Arrest Grant, that will be coming to a close August 30th. We'll be reapplying for it this winter. It'll be due in February. The hard part about th this particular grant is we don't know whether or not we receive the funding until about... Uh, 30, 20 to 30 days before the funding starts. So it's, um, it's one where as we're going into a budgeting process, we don't have a guarantee of funding, but we will be applying for it. All right. So um, that's uh, primarily a lot of their sources. And with uh, organizations that are like this, um, there's a lot of uh, steps being moved forward to help funding crime victim advocate, advocates and many other campaigns that help uh, prevent um, violent crimes. Um, up next, we got... Uh, uh, Kelly McGuire, and she uh, she's the uh, Prevention Relationships Officer, um, and, and what she talked about is uh, they were talking about the Make Your Move campaign that explores uh, preventing um, sexual assaults. Uh, Kelly McGuire visits with schools to talk about uh, um, to talk about uh, no s being able to say no and being able to um, look for the signs of sexual assault, and she goes to schools and she talks to uh, eighth eighth and ninth graders through high schools and middle schools. A healthy relationships and consent curriculum that I teach in middle school, and I've taught that to about 400 eighth graders so far this year at CS Porter and Washington, so all of their eighth graders, and that's five lessons, so that's a lot of visits to the schools. Um, and then Meadow Hill doesn't do their lessons till the spring, and I'll also be at Big Sky with their freshmen um, starting actually tomorrow and continuing into next week. Um, I'm also really excited that the MCPS curriculum coaches have invited me to train all of their middle school health teachers. They're trying to move more toward their teachers teaching the curricula themselves rather than relying on guest speakers. Um, and I, I have mixed opinions about that. I think it's great to be able to go in as a professional, as an expert on this topic, and provide that and work with the teachers. But um, it is a lot of time. And so if I'm able to train all the teachers in April and transition that work to them, then that will free me up for a lot of other projects. All right. So um, um, a lot of what MCPS is doing is they're trying to – take uh, initiative on this as well and there um, there's a bunch of other programs as well that are helping um, young kids uh, understand what it consent is it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, like consent to sex or anything like just like being able to understand that uh, permission in general because um, anything um, the earlier you can teach a kid about consent in general is something that would help them in the long run um, let's see boom 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 of course, Michelle Cares talks about the uh, the bar scene um, and where Make Your Move has been very productive in preventing sexual violence. Um, let's see. I think I have – let's see. Okay, so Gwen Jones, uh, she talks about the uh, Marcy's Law uh, that was passed in the state of Montana and how it will affect uh, CVA and other um, organizations with crime adv um, victims advocate. And if you don't know what Marcy's Law is, and it was passed in the state of Montana, which basically notifies uh, victims of crimes, whether or not you're, uh, the, the person who committed the crime against you, uh, you'd get a notification whether or not this person was on parole or is getting out of jail. Um, 
So this is what Marcy's Law, which was passed in the state of Montana, would affect uh, organizations like this. The issue is that all crimes, whether it's a misdemeanor theft or a uh, a domestic violence homicide are going to require the same kinds of notification. And so just the sheer volume requires more people. Um, we will continue to be notifying the victims that we work with at the level that we have been. Um, and what we'll, we'll be doing is working with the prosecution offices to ensure that they know when those notifications are happening so they have a record of it. But what it looks like is they're going to be doing their own notification as well just to ensure that it's been happening. Um, in some places, like in California, they've opted for a passive system, so it, information about cases is available online and a victim can access that at any time. Um, from what I've heard locally, that that doesn't seem like an option that will necessarily work in Montana. And part of that, there's differences in the law, and I'm not a lawyer, I'm not going to, I don't know how to parse that difference and what that means in terms of the implementation. So. At this point, we're just making sure that our communication with the prosecutors is open, that we're following through to provide them with our information about notification, um, and then we'll take direction from them depending on what needs they have from us. All right, so that was uh, basically wrapped uh, up this uh, public safety in house um, meeting directly uh, with the update of the three uh, major crime um, victim advocate um, programs and sexual assault prevention programs. The city of Missoula continues to support these programs and more as the presentation was informational only and did not require a vote. Um, moving on, we got admin and finance. One of the big things that have been happening in the last couple of years or trying to happen in the last couple of years is um, having more space for the city police to store their evidence. And uh, a couple of years ago, they started to try to do an SID, which uh, special improvement district or something. Um, they tried to do this, but it was voted down completely um, against um, and a lot of because they didn't really want to fund X amount of money for this. But with this new um, with this new facility that came for sale, which is going to be off of Catlin Street, will be available. And this is uh, John Engen, and he's kind of given a nice little introduction onto uh, this this um, new thing. Ranging from uh, building brand new facilities uh, to uh, building some facilities or modifying facilities to accommodate immediate needs. The most immediate need um, is evidence. And uh, we had a CIP item. We did our due diligence on trying to plug an evidence facility into our Scott Street property. The price came back uh, at something that was uh, shocking and way beyond our means. Uh, so Chief Brady uh, and uh, CAO uh, Rickel embarked on uh, looking elsewhere for opportunities that may meet our needs and with the help of uh, Julie Gardner uh, we found uh, what we think is uh, an almost ideal situation um, and it comes in at a price that allows us to modify it appropriate f appropriately for police needs. Um, it's in a good place, it's uh, ready to go, and it will meet our needs for a long time. Uh, of course, um, once again, that was uh, Mayor John Ingen. He was talking about uh, a new facility for uh, evidence and, of course, additional um, staff for the Missoula City Police um, to either, for, for right now, it's to store evidence and how they're going to evolve it in the future uh, will be determined. Um, Mike Brady, the chief of police, uh, talks about the new location um, and it's going to be, once again, the new location is going to be basically across the street from West Side Lanes. Uh, we would accommodate our needs for evidence storage for years to come. We would only have office space for the two uh, and possibly three people that actually work with the evidence. Um, so that brought us to looking at other options. And we've located this uh, facility on Catlin Street. Um, the location is at uh, 101 North Catlin, I believe. And um, it's across the street from Westside Lanes, which is there where Dale is pointing to. And the estimate, the, the new construction estimates for total square footage was around 18,000 square feet. Um, this facility is around 17,000 square feet. The, the benefits of this facility are that um, the 
funding required to purchase, upgrade, and outfit to handle the evidence storage uh, under the requirements that we need to do it now. The, the costs will come in substantially less than what the new construction costs would have been. All right. So um, based on those costs um, of what Mike uh, Brady was talking about is that uh, – a couple of years ago, police did try to do it with an SID, but were unable to gather the support needed to make that happen. The original wanted to build uh, an add-on to the main offices in the downtown area because they store a lot of evidence in their downtown facility, um, and they wanted just to expand it. And also one of the um, issues that they had with it before is that there was like a water main pipe that kind of ran through their evidence area. Um, so that was one of the things that they uh, did not like about it. Um, Dale Bickle talks about how the city could purchase this property along with renovations in a three-prong approach uh, based on CIDs, not SIDs. So it's completely different, but it uh, doesn't feel different. Uh, so here's Dale Bickle. URD2 doesn't have a lot of capacity either. Um, part of the due diligence phase here would be to approach the MRA board with a proceed without prejudice notion to get um, to try to get funding for this facility as well. What, what we've been talking about recently is trying to, to um, do this in thirds. There's more impact fee money available in, in the fund that, would, that could be attributed to this. So if we could do this um, in a three-way sp split, that's about $800,000 from the CIP, from MRA, and from impact fees, um, that would be a... Um, that would be a, a, a really good and uh, fairly simple way for us to, to, to do this. And I think Ellen is here to um, can talk about that. And so what we would, what the general fund, what the CIP would do is um, ask for a proceed without prejudice, likely issue um, some sort of lease or some sort of financing to cover that part. And then as um, MRA's funding came in from URD2, as development occurs over the course of that, we would ask them to, re to pay that portion of it. All right. So... Um from what we uh, uh, discerned is that they're getting um, from three different funding sources to pay for this uh, n this uh, facility that already exists, not to mention they're going to be throwing in some um, renovations as well. And, of course, this uh, the city passed this onto the consent agenda to be approved on Monday's meeting. And I believe that they hope to be done with this facility by June and earliest with construction happening in March. And they, and they uh, expect this to be about $800,000 give or take, um, but you never know until, you know, the bill is actually there. Uh, <laughs> um, but that is pretty much it for your city council report. I have a, a, a brief couple things with your uh, Missoula events, so I'm just going to get through that with my last uh, six minutes that I have airing live on Missoula Community Access Television. Uh, Friday, we got blow paint monsters. Uh, put a few dabs of paint on a piece of paper, blow air in them with a straw, and see what you get. And this is happening at the Children's Museum uh, starting at 11 a.m. Um, and more in terms of water painting classes. So if it's um, this one is uh, more for adults. There's Children's Museum. So if you adults are like, you know what, I want to do water coloring, but without those kids, this is the one for you. And it's going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at noon today. And classes for any levels in a large meeting room featuring an individual approach for skills and a group focus for subjects and compositional techniques open for ages 18 and up and it's happening from noon to 2 p.m. this afternoon. Uh, Tasty Thai at uh, Taste Buds Kitchen is on tonight at 7 p.m. Who needs takeout? Join them for their authentic Thai food where you get to learn how to make your own Thai food and um, it's gluten-free and bring your own beer and it's $40 per person because I'm assuming that they are going to be providing the ingredients for you as well. So that's how much the raw material and the lessons are going to cost per person. Uh, there's public skate night um, at the Glacier Ice Rink. It is public skate adult night. Grab your friends or special someone and join them for the skating at the Glacier Ice Rink. The skate runs from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. and mission is $6 and skate rentals are $3. So once you're done doing the art walk downtown, you can go to the painter shop, uh, <laughs> on Ronan Street, and from there you go to Glacier, and pretty much you're pretty much covered in terms of all this stuff. You can also go to the artist shop. I believe that's off of Brook Street. Um, there's a lot of different great things, and let me talk about some of the music stuff happening for your Friday night. Um, let's move on. Cash for Junkers is going to be at the Union Club. Uh, Shramama mm, Residency Week One is going to be at the VFW Post 209. Um, Andrea Herschel and Luna Roja will be at uh, Top Hat Lounge at 10 p.m. 
And uh, here are some of your Saturday events. Uh, there's fun drama workshop for kids. Um, this is Missoula Public Library large meeting room. If you uh, if you have a kid who wants to um, enhance their skills of making people laugh by reading comedy monologues. Um, marketing to Ellen show and others so it's uh, you know Ellen loves those cute kids especially if they're funny and charming and this is a fun little uh, workshop for that and it's going to be at 10 a.m. at the large meeting room tomorrow morning um, skate for free at 10 a.m. at the glacier ice rink there uh, bring your friends and skate for free from 10 a.m. to 11 30 a.m. at glacier ice rink enjoy games and it's going to be free um, and, and class registration day as well. Um, there's open figure drawing at the uh, Missoula Art Museum, so it's going to cost ten dollars for uh, um, and ten dollars or eight dollars for members of the Missoula Art Museum. This is an open drawing session. Provides artists the opportunity to draw a live model, and this person will be nude, so it's eighteen and up. Um, and that's pretty much it for uh, the highlighted Saturday events. Um, John Floridas will be playing at. Uh, the Missoula Brewing Company at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander tomorrow night. Mudslide Charlie tomorrow night at the Union Club. Easter Island at the VFW. Uh, VFW um, will be at 10 p.m. Kenny James Miller Band will be at the top. At, and, and those are just the music events that are happening on Saturday night. Um, Jazz on the River, Imagination Brewing Company on Sunday, 5 p.m. And, and, and the Ed Norton Big Band at the Montana Winery at 6 p.m. tomorrow uh, um, on Sunday. And over here is... Uh Let's see. Okay, that's pretty much it for all your events. I kind of went through that pretty quickly. If you're interested in finding out more about what to do in Missoula, MissoulaEvents.net is the place to go for all your events need. And I just kind of highlighted things that kind of stood out. Of course, there's always a bunch of trampoline jump-ins, adult TNTs at the uh, Bitterroot, um, uh, at the Bitterroot Gymnastics, uh, Roots Acro Sports Center. Uh, just all sorts of just wonderful things happening in um, Missoula, which you guys can totally take part of. First Fridays tonight, there's a lot of art mu art stuff happening. Missoula Art Museum is a great place to go. Dana Gallery is a place I always go, even though a lot of times they have a lot of the same art. Um, <laughs> no offense, but it's true. Um, you got Gecko Design that usually has art stuff. Um, artist Shop. Um, I can't really think of, a, there's a bunch of them. Clay Studio of Missoula, which is not in downtown Missoula, but Clay Studio of Missoula is a great place where you can look at nice little 3D um, clay models of all sorts of wonderful things. It's like, for me, it'd be like, I'd only go if I can make like an ashtray or whatever, just like really cheesy ashtray. And um, I remember that um, when I was, uh, when I was, um, I guess a younger adult, maybe a couple years ago, my mom tried to get rid of that ashtray that I made for her when I was five, and I and I like almost cried. I was just like, Mom, I, I made that for you when I was five, and she just gave me that look. She's like, um, it was like, of course I would remember, Mother. I knew, I know, I know it's down. I made that for you when I was five, and it was really a precious gift, something that I made for you, because you know, once you're like that young, you don't need to buy a gift. You just need to like make like a a drawing or whatever like here macaroni art here you go oh yeah uh, you want a macaroni art too here's one for you and here's one for you macaroni art for everybody and then once you start getting older and older it's like okay you got to start thinking about getting like you know a <laughs> a real gift all right so um <laughs> Uh, we got a minute, about a minute left in our show. Um, once again, to find out more information, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixot.com slash wakeupmissoula. A nice, some, so nice we made you write it all twice. It's our Wake Up Missoula webpage. You can also Google us. You could uh, subscribe to us on our uh, YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. MCAT.org is a great resource. Our Saturday drop-in is tomorrow at 1 p.m., so you can drop your kid age 9 to 13, and they get to do some stop animation. And, of course, next Wednesday will be a brand-new stop animation anthology video. Uh, so without further ado, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. Um, thanks for joining me, and I will see you Wednesday. Thank mm -hmm. you.